you probably feel quite stagnant. You probably feel like you need to grow. You probably aren't very happy with where you currently are. What do you need to do to change yourself? Today, I'm gonna to be talking about and give you one tip to massively change your life and actually change your brain. I do promise you this though, most of you guys listening out there are not gonna like it. And let me give you an example before I give you what that tip is. Let's say you and I decided that we wanted to start working out every single day together, right? So we go to the gym, you and I, and every single day, you wanted to, you know, maybe you went in and you're like, all right, I'm going to do chest today. I'm going to do legs tomorrow. I'm going to do biceps and triceps and shoulders on Wednesday. And you, you make this plan of all of the different exercises you're going to do. And every single day that we walk in the gym together, I do the exact same exercises. Not only do, they, I, do I do the exact same exercises, I use the exact same weight, the exact same reps, and the exact same amount of sets. And you came out to me and you're like, hey, Rob, listen, uh, I know that you want to lose some muscle. I'm sorry, I know you want to lose some fat. And I know you want to gain some muscle. You know that you have to lift heavier to grow muscle, right? You know you have to lift heavier? You, you can't just stay on the exact same weight. You can't stay on the same amount of reps. You can't stay on the same amount of sets. And I'm like, no way. I'm positive that I'm going to get the body I want, that I'm going to grow muscle, that I'm going to get the body of my dreams with this exact amount of weight, with this exact amount of reps, and this exact amount of sets. You would think that I was crazy, wouldn't you? Even if you don't work out, you're listening to me right now, even if you don't work out, you're not a muscle master, whatever it is, you know that it would be absolutely ridiculous for me to think that if I did the exact same thing over and over and over and over again, that there would be any shift in my body after a while. You know, even if you're not a, a, you know, a fitness lord, you know that in order for muscles to grow, in order for my body to lose fat, in order to get me into the dream shape of where I want to go, I have to continue to lift heavier. I have to lift what I've never lifted before in order to get the body that I've never had before, right? It's simple. We know that. What the hell is the difference with your life? You know, in order to get the body that you want, in order to get the body that you've never had before, you have to do what's uncomfortable. You have to lift what you've never lifted. What you have to do is you have to make sure that your body is uncomfortable. That way it's going to change because a body that is comfortable is not going to change. We all know that. Well, in order to get the life that you want, you're going to have to do what's uncomfortable. You're going to have to do what you've never done. In order to get the body you want, you've got to do what you've never done. In order to get the life that you want, you've got to do what you've never done. What you're comfortable with is not going to change you. Remember this quote for the rest of your life. If it doesn't challenge you, it doesn't change you. You have to do what's hard. You have to do what's uncomfortable. You have to take the hard route. You have to do what you've never done before. You have to do what you don't want to do. Why? Because our bodies always want to be comfortable. Our brains always want to try to avoid the things that are hard because the things that are hard are outside of our comfort zone and outside of our comfort zone, our brain automatically sees as a threat. It automatically sees as danger in some sort of way. When you see an escalator, start taking the stairs. Start doing what you don't want to do. Start doing what's harder. When you think about taking a hot shower in the morning, switch it to cold. Don't even allow yourself to be comfortable. When you think about sleeping in, wake up early. When you think about finishing your reps, do one more. When you think about the, the, you're done with your running, go another mile. You have to push your limits. The only way that your life is going to change is if you do things that you don't currently do right now. It's so simple, but so profound because so few people actually do this. We all know that we need to do what we've never done before to become what we've never been. But why do we keep doing the same shit? every single day. Doesn't make any sense. You have to do what's uncomfortable. When you sit down on the couch to go look on Instagram, make yourself get up and do 50 push-ups. Make yourself do what you don't want to do. Push yourself to do stuff that's outside of your comfort zone. This is the way that you build resilience. You have to push your limits. You have to be on the edge of your comfort zone at all points in time. Your comfort zone will not change you. If it doesn't challenge you, it doesn't change you. You have to, as David Goggins likes to say, you have to get used to the suck. You have to do things that suck. The beautiful thing about this though, is when you start to develop the feeling of, you know what, I'm going to do what I don't want to do. And you start to show up for yourself in ways that you've never shown up for yourself. Not only does your body change, not only does your mindset change, not only does your life change, 
but you start to build more confidence in yourself than you ever have before. People always want confidence, and I've got episodes on confidence, and that's beautiful. There's definitely ways to build confidence, but one of the biggest ways to build confidence is to show up for yourself in ways that you've never shown up for yourself. To do the things that you don't wanna do when there's nobody watching. And you can't flex on Instagram by talking about how many push-ups you did, or the fact you took a cold shower, but to do these things in silence, to push yourself past your comfort zone when no one else is there, when no one else is paying attention. Why? Because you know in your head that you show up for yourself. That's how you build confidence. If I push myself every single day for the next six months, six months from now, my confidence will be 10 times what it currently is if I'm not used to pushing myself. Why? Because I've been showing up for myself, because I've been doing what's hard. It's like if you have a friend that no matter what, if you call them, they show up at your house. You have an issue, they're there. You have an issue, they're there. You have an issue, you're there. You know, they have an issue, they're there. They, they start showing up, they're always there for you. You know you can count on that person. Confidence is knowing that you can count on yourself, that you're going to show up, even if no one else is around, even if you can't flex on Instagram. I promise you this, it's not fun, but it's rewarding as hell. There's very few things that will give you a mental high as doing something that you didn't wanna do. I love cold showers. Let me rewind, I hate cold showers. I love the feeling of accomplishment that I get after cold showers. Before I get into a cold shower, I hate it. I'm usually cussing. I'm usually, you know, dropping a whole bunch of F-bombs. I'm cussing. I'm screaming. I'm looking at myself in the mirror and I'm like, you better freaking do this. Don't want to do it. When I'm in the cold shower, no part of me is like, oh my God, this is so much fun. Never, never have I been like, I love this cold shower. It sucks every single time. But when I get out of it, the mental high that I have from doing something that I didn't want to do and showing up for myself, nothing else is like it. That's where confidence is built, is to show up for yourself at a higher level than anybody else will show up for you. One of the things that, that's really interesting is I've coached thousands of people and people always show up for other people way more than they show up for themselves. Why would you ever do that? Why would you show up for other people more than you show up for yourself? If you show up for yourself at a really high level, you start to grow, which means that you can then show up for other people at a very high level. So instead of putting other people first all the time, put yourself first. For those of you guys that are parents, because I've coached many parents, I know exactly what you're thinking. Oh, but I can't put myself first because I have children. I get that, but actually you should be first. You should, when the kids are not around, when they're asleep, whatever it is, you should have your time that you develop yourself. Too many people get caught and lost, they, they lose themselves in being a, being a parent. When you build yourself outside of being a parent, when the children are asleep, when they're at school, whatever it is they're doing, when you build yourself, you become a better parent for when they do come back around. And there's nothing more rewarding than the mental high that you get from doing something that you didn't want to do. Why? Because progress equals happiness. That's what Tony Robbins says. We are built to progress. We are built to grow. We are built to push the limits. Humans are built to expand. That's why it feels so good to push yourself to do something you don't wanna do. After it, you have an amazing mental and physical high. We are built to push the limits. This is also why people who have not been pushing themselves for years start to get more anxious. They start to get more depressed it's because your body, your mind, every aspect of you, your soul is built to push itself past what it can do. That's why it feels so good. But then you, you have to realize, when do you not feel good is when you're sitting on the couch and you're scrolling on Instagram and you've been watching Netflix for the past four hours. That's when your body starts to feel bad. That's when you don't feel motivated, right? But when do you feel good? After accomplishing something. It's a mental high. It shows you, you were built for that. But you won't change unless you do what you've never done. So I want you to think about that. When was the last time that you pushed yourself outside of what you knew that you could do? When you did something that scared the shit out of you. When you did something that you had never done before. When was the last time that you've done it? I guarantee you, if it's been a long time, you probably feel quite stagnant. You probably feel like you need to grow. You probably aren't very happy with where you currently are. But if you push yourself and push yourself and push yourself, some of you guys out there have been doing this for a while. You've been pushing yourself, you're trying to go and push yourself a time to go, and you know how it feels. The sense of accomplishment. There's no, there's no trophy at the end of this thing. It's showing up for yourself simply because you wanna show up for yourself, because you know you deserve it. Your life won't change unless you do. You have to do what you've never done. You have to seek discomfort. You have to look for the discomfort in your life. When you notice yourself every single day doing the same things over and over and over and over again, you've got to mentally go, I got to make a change. And as we get older, 
it becomes a lot harder to make changes. We become more set in our ways. We think about, oh yeah, I'd rather just keep doing what I'm doing. I'd rather just go to the same restaurant, eat the same food. I'd rather do the same workout. I'd rather, you know, hang out and watch some Netflix versus go to the gym. As we get older, we get more set in our ways. Screw that. Do not let that happen to you. If you notice yourself getting stuck in your ways, if you notice that you've been in your comfort zone for six months, a year, five years, 10 years, you got to get out of that. Shit. You've got to push yourself. This is also how you change your brain, right? So people always want to change their brain. They always are excited when I talk about changing their brain. Neuroplasticity is the actual act, the science of changing your brain. But neuroplasticity doesn't happen from doing the same thing. Neuroplasticity, changing your brain, happens when you push the limits of your body and your mind and you do something different. Do what you've never done before. When you drive to work, drive a different way to work. Listen to something different. Hang out with different people. Eat different food. Go to lunch at a different place. Stop hanging out with the exact same coworkers that you always have. Get some new friends. I'm not saying you have to get rid of anybody, but just do things you've never done before. Go to concerts you've never been to. Here's a challenge for you. Say yes more often. Stop saying no so much. When someone's like, hey, do you want to go out with us and do X, Y, Z? And you're like, no, nah, I'm good. Because it's something that you don't you know, tend to do typically. Go, you know what? Next 30 days, I'm going to challenge myself to say yes to everything. How different would your 30 days, how, how different would the next 30 days of your life be if you just said yes to everything? It'd be different, wouldn't it? There'd be some challenges. You'd feel different, but you have to do what you don't want to do. You have to push your limits. You have to find your edge. You have to lean into discomfort. That's the only way that you're going to change. You can't go in and lift the exact amount of reps, do the exact amount of sets, do the exact same exercises, and think that your life is just going to magically be different a year from today. I promise you, if you do the exact same thing that you've been doing for the past 365 days, I can fast forward 365 days from today and see that your life is in the exact same position that it currently is. Nothing changes unless you change. If it doesn't challenge you, it doesn't change you. What do you need to do to change yourself? What do you need to do to make your life look different? What is something that you have been saying no to for way too long and you start saying yes to it? Have you thought about that? What is it that you are holding yourself back from, the greatness that you're holding yourself back from, the body that you're holding yourself back from, the, the life, the business, the bank account, the relationships, the family, the love, the joy, the happiness that you're holding yourself back from simply because you won't stop doing the same shit you've been doing for so long. You've got to push yourself. You've got to get outside of your comfort zone. You've got to find your edge and you've got to constantly push that edge over and over and over and over again. And I promise you this, if you push your edge every single day for the next 30 days, you'll be a different person in 30 days. If you do it for the next 365 days, you will be a noticeably different person. People will start coming up to you and ask you what you're doing. You look so much different, you look so much better. You're, you're glowing, you seem happier. What are you doing? What am I doing? I'm just being a different Rob every single day. If it doesn't challenge you, it doesn't change you. Hey, thanks so much for watching this video. If you want to learn even more about mastering your mind, click right here and watch this video as well. Ask yourself this question, is what I'm doing right now getting me closer to or further from my goals? Right now, in this very moment, what are you doing? I love that you're listening to this podcast, but you got to get off your ass at some point and start taking action.